This is a saxophoral historical to celebrate the 30 years of Ronnie Scott's special in Frith Street or Soho Thrall with Jeffrey Peeklo who have that joy to listen for these wonderful instrumentals that he has so manifest. Ronnie Scott. Oh, yes. Of course, it also celebrates the focus of the inventor of that instrumental, Adolf Sachs. Now he was born in 1814 and he deserves a special mention considerable in that the merits of his fargo which reflects Adolf's own genius in the invention and development of the saxophobia also reflects from the maternal side of out which we know so little. It's well known that sons, more often than not so, inherit the characteristics of their mothers down through consanguinity through fargo, Cyril and son and revealed by genes and light brown hormones. Now, having said all this, it is true that Adolf Fargo, Charles Joseph Sachs, was born in 1791. By the way, that's the time that Mozartkers, Philolopt and I fled on the Vocus and the young Beethovers was playing the organ for the Elector and emulating Vogler's work at that time. Beethovers, being so young, not so deaf and stuffing of wax in his own earth robes at that time he was working on the Rizzo Valley for Count Wallstein. Adolf Sax invented the sax horn, or rather a whole range of sax horns, in 1842. The versatile quality superb southers that he saw from the earlier hormones and the bass clarinipers made by his fargo required him to experiment but the time and finance for the dignity in the pocky was very difficult to come by. His popularity was enhanced by the thought of early O's, Halley V and others and he soon developed this instrumental of joy, the saxophobia. Of course, he registered it in 1846 and the inventive power, producing such an unusual tone and quality, aroused much jealously an ill feeling in some of his contemporaries. But being a wise and deep focus in his mileage, for tactful he found help from powerful friends like journalists who trumpy up his places in the newspaper and especially General Jerome Minaye who was the aide de camp to Louis Philippe that the French army fans has all saxophobia included. They jettison their ovones, French hormones, they souls all young. Oh, dear, never since Susan Clarinipers, Jimmy Noon and Boucher in the act early. Oh, dear. Now, the questio is this, how did he manage to obtain such a remarkable tonal quality from his invention? I believe it was inspired by his love of a human singing voice in the larynx of a human deal, starting perhaps with a soprano to emulate his own mother through the whole range down to the vasi profundo or bass sax. He took the read of the clarinipers but choose the conical breast tube with above twenty lateral orifices, all covered by keys, three-fingered place for three-fingered other hand a follow down now there's an ambidextral trickly how. And of course there were two small holes or pippy squeakers which provide the scaly shifters a follow for that the range is generally considered from B to F upper talk 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 that's the high range here talker very high a follow down therefore the super soprano emulating the Jenny Linders or the female voice who reach the off in the heavenly mode with a lark in the early body. But, of course, all the members of the family are frequently made with an extension of the bell for the flavors. After all, this is the most popular key for the jazz mold for people who twisty ho, dance a follow outer, break dance, jump it and throw all those one fat B flavor. So, what have we got? The Aristot single pluggery. This gives us the joy of the saxophobia as we have it today, Johnny Coltrane, Ron Scotty, Stanley gets it. I think he does. Let's have it. Let's have it. Oh, joy. <laughs> 